In the last video where we took a look at running Windows 10 on Parallels on the MacBook Air, we compared it to directly to Boot Camp running on an older MacBook Pro. Now we're running Windows 11 on the MacBook Air using Parallels again, thanks to a guide that we got from Andrew Tsai, and I'll link that down in the description. Now notably, there's one other big upgrade that I have with this version. Now I've got a 16 gig MacBook Air that I'll be updating a review for soon, and I'm going to be able to allocate eight gigs of RAM to Parallels instead of the four gigs of RAM that were previously allocated. So hopefully we'll see an increase in the performance. I'm also wanting to check out Windows 11, but we'll just do a quick demo of it here. I'm going to have a longer video reviewing Windows 11 on the Surface Pro X, so if that's not already live, it will be live soon, so be sure to check it out. So if you have an M1 Mac, be sure to take advantage of the trial while you can, just so you can see whether it does make sense for you and whether you would want to potentially purchase it. Now, for me, the previous version of Parallels running Windows 10 wasn't enough to really want me make me want to use it and pay for it. So we're gonna go in and go into the configuration. Yep, I already updated it so it now has eight gigs of RAM rather than the four gigs from before. Here is your Windows 11 desktop, just as you'd expect it. Now, notably, you can see some of my all my folders already existing on my Mac. That's one of the questions that I saw in the in the comments of the last video. You can actually access some of the folders from your Mac on the Parallels desktop. So I have screenshots folder, for example, and it's going to open up in the File Explorer app. So if you're one of the rare people like me who prefer File Explorer over Finder, then you can also browse your Mac files through fi File Explorer, which is a nice feature. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and open one of these videos. It should, by default, open up in, yes. So I can open it up in Movies and TV, or it gives you the option to open up in your Mac applications as well that you have installed, which will exit parallels in order to open them. Now, this is a feature that's already always been there. It's not Windows 11 exclusive, but just wanted to show you guys that that feature is an option. By default, a lot of applications actually open in Mac if they can't find an application to use it on Windows. So there we go. I have Microsoft Excel installed, so we'll go ahead and give that another shot, just like I did beforehand, hopefully. Um, let's go ahead and do this example model. Hopefully the performance is going to be there again because it wasn't great for last time. Let me give you an example of Microsoft Excel shortcuts if you're not super familiar with them. So from here, you should be able to easily jump to your previous level of content, your, your total line here, and be able to access it quickly by just pre pressing Control up arrow. Now notably, I've noticed that Control up arrow has its own functionality baked into Mac OS, which unfortunately takes over, and so you can't have that sort of functionality here. So thankfully, I should be able to go into parallel settings, which I'll do in a second here, and change them such that the control shortcut is properly Mac mapped to Windows. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem like by default, those, those uh, keyboard shortcuts are taken over by Windows, but instead by Mac. And I wish there was kind of a setting for parallels to basically have you know a safe word approach where only a single keystroke would be taken over by Mac. And otherwise, by default, it would just enter in the keystrokes that Windows would otherwise take care of. But I'll have to dig through the settings and see if that's even an option. So unsurprisingly, your command hotkey works just like your Windows button. And so you can control where your Windows sit on screen and Windows will actually, by default, go to your, your selection menu so you can add in side-by-side -side applications, snap applications, however you want them. So we can look at a quick preview of the snap features in Windows 11. So let's go ahead and we'll hover over this, and there we can select different portions of the screen that we want this application to go. So let's go ahead and put this into quadrants. We can select all of our applications and put them into quadrants, which is a cool feature. I don't know if it's really very default for me. It's something that I would use normally, but for those who kind of want that feature or, or want an easy way to be able to snap into corners without dragging and dropping, I think it's an, a cool option. Now, some of the other features of Windows 11, notably, you go into your new start screen and there it is. I'm kind of mixed on the new start screen, frankly. I'm not the biggest fan, notably because of uh, there's uh, no folders anymore. There's only this, this kind of fixed grid of 18 applications per page. I wasn't the biggest fan of live tiles, frankly, so I'm not too disappointed that they're gone, but we'll talk more about that specifically in my full coverage of 
Windows 11 on the Surface Pro X. I turned off, or I'm turning off all of the keyboard settings specifically to try and reproduce traditional Windows keyboard shortcuts. Okay, so it looks like Mac will just take over the keyboard shortcuts and unfortunately I can't basically alt tab or command tab. Okay, so window or command is now alt, which is fine because now option is gonna be windows. Sorry, alt is gonna be windows. Okay, so finally, let's just make sure that control equals control. I mean, it seems to be obvious, but let's go ahead and let's go ahead and open up Excel again. Control. <sighs> Why? Why does literally everything go back to Mac OS? I don't want to open up Mac OS. Just disable the default shortcuts, please. Control, left arrow, is map to control left arrow. Never. Here, Mac system shortcuts, command tab, dashboard, mission control will be sent to your Mac operating system, not the virtual machine. Never, never. Wait, Mac system shortcuts will be sent to your virtual machine. Do I want it always or? <laughs> okay, okay. I will pay for parallels if they can get this to work. Okay. Um, mouse shortcuts, keyboard menu. Okay, so all I want is to map command to alt, which is right. Let's just turn off command or command tab. Windows is now option, control is now control. Let's turn off that. Let's see how this works. So now we're going to swipe back, control, it works. Control shift, it works. Yep. Select an area, oh my gosh. Alt tab, it works. Okay, control. Okay, so now um, Windows, I move my file explorer into the first position. Windows, or now option, one should open up file explorer. There is a little bit of lag, it's almost imperceptible, but being in Excel for so many years of my life, I get really familiar with when a computer has a little bit of lag in it, and this feels like it has a tiny bit of lag. But that being said, right, like I'd rather have a little bit of lag than have to deal with not having it as an option. I would, I would prefer it. So Alt-Tab works most of the time. Now Command-Tab, should just switch between these two apps. Yep, command tab, very, very quick. That's it, okay. Okay, now a three finger swipe should be able to specifically only work in Windows. So let me see if I can change that. Options, or hardware, mouse and keyboard, mouse, Okay, page loading feels slower. Scrolling performance feels a little off. Okay, looking at the exact same page in Chrome on Mac OS, so this, this is what the scrolling performance should feel like. But if I go back, you can see that the page is actually having trouble loading, so there's a little bit of stutter. So that's not the best experience, but let's go ahead and try and watch a YouTube video. Okay, so it auto loaded in 1080p, which is good. Let's go ahead and try and run it in 4K. And then I have a tendency to play back often at one and a half times speed. That's, uh, that's not good. I don't know if it catches on the video. I'm guessing it catches on video. This is pretty bad. I just hit full screen a few seconds ago.
there's full screen. Okay, let's turn down to 1080p rather than 4K and see if it solves the issue. So, yeah, performance here is not great. And while some of you Mac users out there might just say that's what Windows 10 performance is like, I promise you it is a lot better than that usually. So one problem I have is when I hover over the bottom, I actually see the Mac OS app selection rather than just the Windows. And so I imagine if I had an auto hide of the Windows taskbar, then I would basically be unable to access it because it would always pop up below this. And so, oh, optimize full screen for games. So hides Mac OS dock, menu bar, and notifications. Let's try doing that. And yep, great. So that fix, fixes my problem there. So now if I hover over the bottom of the screen, then Mac OS menu bar and whatever doesn't show up. Share Mac applications with Windows. Okay, so now I can turn that off. Okay, now if I go back into Windows and I type in Excel, It's so slow. Okay, now I only see the Windows app and not the Mac app, which is a good feature for me because I don't want to exit Windows to go into Mac OS. So now I'm just letting this update and hopefully the experience is going to get better once I update to the newest version of Windows 11. Now, I will say that I kind of combine two videos in this. First of all, the experience of using parallels on eight gigs of RAM rather than the four gigs that I had allocated last time. And then the other thing was testing out Windows 11 on Parallels. They're kind of two separate videos, but I, I didn't think there was enough content for just one, so I added them together. But if you want me in a future video to focus on one or the other, be sure to let me know down in the comments. I think my experience of Parallels has been slowly improving. It's not quite to the point where I think uh, Boot Camp was in terms of kind of a native fe feeling experience, but we thankfully solved a lot of the issues that I had in the last video by going into the parallel setting this time around. So I'm going to actually kind of teeter on the edge of whether I want to buy a parallels license. For the next six days of my trial, I'm going to tr continue to try it out, see if I can get the native Windows 10 or Windows 11 experience and be happy with it to the point where I'd want to buy parallels. But we'll, we'll continue to update you in the future on whether that happens. Thank you for watching this video. I know it was a little bit disorganized. I just wanted to kind of try everything. So I hope you enjoyed and you stuck around for this long. If you did, be sure to check out some of my other videos, get subscribed, and let me know down in the comments what you want out of new videos. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.